I always end up getting baited by the Cleveland Browns because every year on paper they have one of the best rosters in the NFL, but for one reason or another, they always end up massively underperforming when I expect them to be a legitimate playoff team. But today, with the help of Mikey McDingle, we're gonna try to save this seemingly cursed franchise and maybe even win them a Super Bowl ring. And if that sounds like fun to you, get a drink, get a snack, get whatever, sit back and relax. I would say get a massage, but probably not while we're rebuilding this team. But super, super quick, massive shout out to Dawson for the suggestion of today's video. Go drop him a sub. Their link is in the description. And if you want a shout out just like that one, just let me know what team to do next down below. Super easy. And we easily like fucking demolished the like and sub goals on the last video, literally like tripled both. So let's see if we can get to 250 likes on this video i'm sure we can do that and if we can hit that i'll have another either fantasy or regular rebuild out on tuesday depending on what y'all want to see so let me know what you want to see and i set a sub goal of 3550 on the last video we're almost at 3700 now so <laughs> let's set the sub goal to 3750 that might be too low subscribe if you're new all i do is rebuilds so if you like rebuilds then you'll like literally all my videos but that's enough plugging I'm really excited to get into this Browns rebuild. This is a team I haven't really done much, and it's a really good team on paper. So let me tell you what I think about this Browns team. Obviously, like I said in the intro, this is one of the best teams in the NFL on paper, but I still don't trust it. You have an amazing offensive line. You have one of the best running backs in the NFL. You have a very underrated receiver in Amari Cooper. You have an at one point top five quarterback in the NFL in Deshaun Watson. You have, in my opinion, the best pass rusher in the NFL in Miles Garrett. And oh yeah, this team traded for Zadarius Smith, another very underrated player. This team just has a lot of underrated players in general. The problem with this team, like I've said a few times now, is they just never do as well as they should. Last year, injuries, the interior defensive line, I mean, especially injuries, definitely held them back. There's just always something that happens with this team, but all they need really is to stay healthy. And I think this could be an elite NFL team. There really isn't one spot on this team that I could point to and say, oh, that's kind of a weakness. I mean, maybe quarterback because Deshaun Watson isn't a great scheme fit here. He's not great over the middle of the field and that's what they do a lot of here. So we'll see what happens with him this year. I don't know how much faith I do have, but we'll see. I mean, even receiver where they don't have great overall players. I mean, I'm expecting at least one other receiver they have to break out, whether it's Donovan Peoples-Jones, Elijah Moore, Hell, I even really liked Cedric Tillman. And thankfully here, we don't have to worry about injuries, obviously. I still need to give some of these rookies dev traits. I'll do that in a second. But I loved the Dewan Jones pick. Siaki Ika, I was screaming at my Seahawks to take him. And then the Browns took him like two picks before they picked. I wanted to die. There are some players I don't have made in my custom rosters, but I don't think they would play much of a role here anyways. But I don't want to spend too much time talking about this team. You can see it. You have eyes. I hope. Unless you don't, I'm terribly sorry. So let's get into this rebuild. I don't think I'm going to start this off in a crazy way. I think this team is good as is. So let's get to the midseason point of year one and let's see what this team can do. All right. Well, at the midseason point of year one, we are six and one. Is that a lot better than the Browns are going to be in real life this year? Probably, but we'll definitely take it. And one of the problems with this team that I didn't even think of is the uh, <laughs> upcoming contract. Tracks. We have negative 21 mil to work with, and we have like five current starters here to re-sign. So unless more money frees up at the end of the year, we're probably not going to be able to bring Zadarius Smith, Anthony Walker, Grant Delpit, Maurice Hurst, who really cares. We're not even starting him. Uh, we're not going to be able to bring any of these players back, more than likely. So hopefully we can free some money up, but we'll see what happens. I'm definitely glad we're doing pretty well. I'm just a little little concerned about our cap space for the entire rebuild. We'll see what happens though, but with that, let's get to the end of year one. Not much to do here, and let's see how this team can finish out. All right, well, if you've seen one of my videos before, you know what this means. Uh, I know I literally just plugged, but it's tradition here, I guess, so like and subscribe if you haven't already. Super easy, helps out a ton, plus it'll help you see more of my banger rebuilds, and it'll make you an OG of the channel, of course, while you still 
can be one because we're growing really quick which thank you so much for that by the way i can't believe we literally just hit 3,000 subs and we're almost at four already like 300 away so thank you all so much for that i really appreciate it but here's a look at the team at the end of year number one we have nick chubb up to a 99 overall amari cooper up to a 92 with morale i mean the team is looking really really good here's the defense which we're gonna lose a lot of this offseason unfortunately it might be a struggle to rebuild it but we'll see but in year number one we finished 13 and 4 very easily making the playoffs and getting a first round bye we destroyed our division rival the Pittsburgh Steelers 42 to 6 in week 18 and let's check out some of the season stats so Deshaun Watson regaining his old form here throwing 4,500 yards 41 touchdowns the 14 picks is a little high but we'll definitely definitely take that rushing Nick Chubb with 1,600 yards 5.6 per carry 16 touchdowns monster year for him we had two 1,000 yard receivers, Amari Cooper with 1,100 yards, 11 touchdowns, and Donovan Peoples-Jones with 1,000 yards and 7 touchdowns. I wanted to get Elijah Moore the production because he actually has a star dev trait. I was considering giving Donovan Peoples-Jones one too because I think he will be good, but I was like, that might be a little cheesy. But either way, at least we had one receiver do really well. David Njoku was solid. Blocking was overall good for Madden for sure. I mean, for real life, 10 sacks isn't great, but for Madden from a left tackle that's pretty good and on defense JOK led the team with 121 tackles tackles for loss 14 for Miles Garrett and Zadarius Smith 10 for Dalvin Tomlinson and sacks Miles Garrett almost tying the sack record with 21 and a half here only seven and a half from Zadarius Smith which is fine it looks like he didn't play that many snaps well he played a good amount our defense as a whole didn't play that many snaps the most was 969 nice or no it was 994 from Miles Garrett or er, wait did we just have a massive rotation for like every position because Juan Thornhill had almost 1100 I, I don't know whatever it is what it is uh Maurice Hurst with four and a half sacks I thought I started Siaki Ika uh, apparently not okay well that's fine and then interceptions five for Jeremiah Wusu Koromoa he had an overall really good year good amount of tackles tackles for loss especially picks couple sacks Denzel Ward had three picks and then a lot of players got two and a few got one so really really good good first year MVP goes to Jalen Hurts of the 12 and 5 Philadelphia Eagles I could maybe see it this year we'll see what happens Deshaun Watson at number six not too bad did I see CJ Stroud up there as a rookie uh maybe but I don't know about that also that's a crazy top three Jalen Hurts makes sense but then Dak Prescott Trey Lance I mean the 49ers are a really good team so maybe Trey Lance makes it up there but he hasn't been great through his NFL career so far offensive player of the year goes to Derrick Henry, which seems rare, surprisingly. Nick Chubb at number five, which with that good of a year to only get number five, I'm kind of scared to check what the rest of those guys did above him. Max Crosby wins defensive player of the year miles garrett only at three okay i i gotta check out some stats here some crazy shit must have happened jok at number eight offensive rookie of the year goes to not a rookie anymore cj stroud wins offensive rookie of the year technically and then defensive rookie of the year goes to will anderson martin emerson at number six even though again not a rookie oh yeah wait i forgot i did that i was like who the fuck dj turner's full first name is apparently juan drago or something uh so i was like you know what that's sick i'll put that as his name in my custom rosters sounds good to me but obviously we're not going to jump into the playoff games because it's only the first year i don't want this rebuild to be five hours long so let's see who we're going to be taking on in the divisional it's going to be the 10 and 7 los angeles chargers well isn't that ironic these are the two teams that always bait me in real life like i said in the intro well i didn't say the chargers but they are the other one where they always have a really good team on paper then whether it's poor coaching or injuries or whatever they just end up under performing hell i predicted the chargers would be in the super bowl like two years ago or something that definitely didn't happen i don't even think they made the playoffs that year but they did have a really good team on paper hell even last year i said they had like maybe the best team on paper and they made the playoffs but they didn't go very far because again injuries like their entire receiving core got hurt it wasn't great but anyways this is a browns rebuild this isn't a chargers rebuild we have an upgrade for perry and winfrey uh that's massive i'm 
I'm sure that'll help us get the win here. Ah, I see. That's why our stats were weird. My depth chart got messed up. Oh yeah, because I like cut some players at the midseason to like make their cap hits not so massive. It didn't do anything. So it was kind of pointless, but it did mess up the depth chart. So that's super fun. Did I mention I am super professional? Professional Madden YouTuber out here. But I'm not even going to click these scenarios. Apparently it'll be a blizzard. Does it snow that much in Cleveland? I don't know. It might. Either way, I don't care. Let's let's see if we can get the win. Probably not because they're a worse overall team, but we'll see what happens. And of course, we, we get smoked. 35 to 17. I didn't think we would get smoked, but I did expect to lose because we had every reason to win and Madden just hates realism for some reason. But with that, let's get into the offseason and let's start actually working on this team. And I'm not going to lie, I'm a little scared. This might be really, really hard. <laughs> so the Chargers do at least end up making the Super Bowl, but they lose to the Cowboys, which are another one of those teams where, hey, they have a really good team. All their fans say, hey, this is our year, and then they make the playoffs, but they don't go very far. They do win the Super Bowl here, though, which I guess that's something for them, I guess. We have Kendall Hinton. Isn't he the one that started at quarterback for the Broncos for like a game? I don't know. But here for re-signings, I am scared to look. Okay, we still have negative 32 mil. Oh, and of course, uh, do you say his name's Sione, or is it Sion? I don't know. Sion Talkie Talkie. Of course, he gets a dev trait. Can't re-sign Zadarius Smith. Can't re-sign Anthony Walker, which he's a really under underrated player when healthy. Grant Delpit. I really wanted him back, but nothing I can really do about that. But to be honest with you, this isn't too terrible. The only one of these guys that is a really good overall is Zadarius Smith, and he wasn't like crazy last year. He had seven and a half sacks, which is good for real life, but sack numbers are usually like crazy in Madden. At least they are for some players. Numbers in general are a little in inflated. And I did actually pull a, br a big brain move. I set the focus scouting position, the three star to both middle linebacker, or no, it was outside linebacker and safety. And those are going to be the two positions we're going to be losing the most. I mean, Zadarius Smith is a defensive end, but obviously we'll just, if we draft a pass rushing outside linebacker, we'll just move him down to defensive end. And we're going to be losing middle linebackers. And if we draft a like off ball linebacker, we'll just move him wherever we lost a player. So this this will actually maybe work out not too bad. Not to mention, we already have Ogbanya Akaronkwo, which I think, I've said this word a million times, I think he's an underrated player, so I don't think it'll be too bad. Famous last words, I guess. Now we're gonna go 0-17 next year, but I think we can recover. Obviously, we're not gonna be able to do literally anything in free agency. Not that the first year free agency is crazy anyways, but of course it does look a little stronger than usual, because why wouldn't it in the year where we can't afford anything? Thing. But with that, there isn't anything for us to do here, so let's just get straight to the draft. Dog, why does Matt or why does Seattle always have the number one pick? Madden just hates them for some reason. They really think that's gonna be the worst team in the NFL? Really? I mean, I guess it is my custom rosters. They're not like the best. They're like a 78, but I mean, like, put some respect on Gino's name for real. He's become one of the most like overhated players in the NFL, which I predicted. I was like, oh, he's doing really well right now. If he makes one mistake, everyone's gonna be like, oh, it looks like Gino wrote back, Gino wrote back, XD. And sure, his second half of the season one wasn't as great as the first, but like his stats, his actual play, his everything was like legitimate top 10. Maybe I'm biased, but he did a lot of things that I was like wanting Russell Wilson to do for a long time. I don't know if I'm saying Gino was better than Russ. Well, he definitely was this year at least, but I don't know. He's just very overhated, as is the case, to, case with most. Seahawks players, to be fair. But back to the Browns rebuild. I'm getting way off topic. I'm rambling like crazy in this rebuild. Of course, no first round pick for the Browns yet. I think we will have one next year. And we don't pick until almost the third round. It's the very end of the second, pretty much. So let's simulate there and let's see who is going to be available. Are you kidding me? Well, I'm pretty sure that's the player I was wanting one pick before us. Unless he's still... No, yeah, I think that was the one. We'll have to check his overall after the draft, but yeah, that's that's not ideal. <laughs> now, actually, this projected first round safety is still available. Is he good? Uh, maybe. He doesn't look great at all, but he might be decent. His coverage isn't good, but he's a box safety, so that's fine. We wouldn't expect that. It's concerning that he's still available, but could be good. You know what? I think I'm gonna go Eric Ventura here. His combine wasn't all that good, though, but his ratings are pretty 
pretty good. I took one of these like lowish pursuit linebackers in the last rebuild and he wasn't great, but he wasn't bad. I'm just concerned that this guy looks like a pure cover linebacker, but he's like not, not that fast. I mean, not slow, slow, but not super quick. I almost wish I could trade up because I'm so torn between taking Mar Morgan Jones and Eric Ventura, but we are going to go Eric Ventura. I think we really need linebacker. He's 6'1", 245, 22 years old out of USC. Not the best combine, but his, lading, his ratings do look good outside of pursuit. Let's take him. Normal dev. God damn it. Okay. 87 speed for a guy that ran a 4.63. That's a little bit rich, but fair, especially the 91 acceleration. I don't know about all that, but we'll take it. I wish he had a dev trait, but to be fair, it's almost the third round, so I guess we'll just take what we can get. A Pennsylvania team taking a cornerback named Artie. It's a bold move. And you know what? I'm gonna make maybe a risky pick here, but James Ware is interesting. I focus scouted him because he was just like the heavy, heaviest corner available and he had good man coverage or at least decent man coverage. The plan is to put him at strong safety, but I never checked his combine and it looks really good. He ran a 4-3-7, which would be really good at safety. The reps are good. I mean, he has as many as the linebacker we just took. So is he going to be great? I don't know, but again, it's the late third round. I got to just take what I can get. So let's take him. Normal dev, unfortunately, but hopefully he'll have at least a decent overall. We'll see. Dude, I hear Sublime being played really loud somewhere. I hope that's not coming through in the video. We'll see. <laughs> All right, so not my greatest draft ever, but it wasn't terrible. I guess it just doesn't look good, mostly because we didn't have a first round pick or a good pick at all. But honestly, a 72 overall in the late second round isn't bad value at all. I wish he had a better dev trait, but there's really nothing I can do about that. I mean, I'm sure there's some way to tell if a player's gonna have a dev trait, but really all I can do is say, hey, this player looks good, I'm gonna take him. And he will start really good athlete, which didn't look like it, but apparently, I guess he's just not very strong, but 69 zone coverage, nice. And then we got another potential starter in James Ware. He was a 69 overall at corner, stayed a 69 at safety with 69 man coverage, triple nice. Wish his tackle was better, but his pursuit is really good for being a corner. His zone coverage is awful, but he's a good athlete. We'll try to develop him, but if he doesn't develop, it won't be hard to find another safety, honestly. And then I kind of just hard through the rest of the draft. I mean, <laughs> I did take every pick here. Roderick Spriggs is actually pretty good. Only normal dev, though. I think I only hit on one dev trait, and it was a backup running back who isn't even as good of an overall as I thought he would be. So that's unfortunate. And what makes it even more unfortunate is the linebacker that I was going to take that got picked one pick before us is a 7 75 overall with hidden. I don't know if I want to put myself through the pain of knowing what his dev trait is, but I'm going to. Ah, ah, of course. What else, what else really could it be? I guess it could be X Factor. It could be worse, but one pick before us, man. One pick. I mean, he was fully scouted and it said first round talent, so I was going to take him, but it is what it is. Fuck it, we ball. And one other player that I was going to take later in the draft that got picked earlier than they were supposed to, it doesn't really matter, but if I'm going to complain, and I'm gonna go all the way. Trust me. It was Quantavius Lowry. He isn't as good as I thought he would be, but he is a 70 overall. And I was looking at his stats. I was like, oh, he's pretty good. He has, I saw he was like a physical receiver, but he had good deep route running, which was interesting. And then I saw, oh, 99 spectacular catch. I was like, oh, okay, fair enough. Again, he probably wouldn't have started, but I was going to take him. He was supposed to be undrafted and he got picked early seven, which I didn't know teams would reach like that. I guess it wasn't technically a reach though. He is a pretty good player. And another one I was going to take is George Reynolds, but eh, he's a 70 overall too. He isn't anything crazy, but better than what we got. But I mean, either way, it was a fine draft. We got maybe one or two starters. And with that, let's get into year number two. All right, here is a look at the team heading into year number two of the rebuild. Really nothing has changed here on offense literally at all. Something interesting, but really not that interesting is last preseason Jerome Ford got mentored by Nick Chubb and went up to star dev. I mean, it's probably not going to matter, but I guess it's still interesting. That's really the only difference here. I mean, even our depth is pretty much the same. Just no money to work with, so it makes it kind of tough. And 
And then on defense, there are definitely some differences, but not necessarily good ones. No more Zadarius Smith, no more Sion Takitaki or Michael Walker. Why am I forgetting his name? I don't know. And no more Grant Delpit, but we did draft or already have a replacement at all those positions. The best one being Eric Ventura was our highest pick this year and is a pretty decent player. So we'll see what we can get from him as a rookie. But yeah, pretty much everything else is the same. And then here's a look at the specialists. I'll try to have them actually like stay this way the whole year and not accidentally reorder them. Also, I'm trying something different that I've been doing recently. I've been putting our best pass rusher as the number one for both edge positions, the second best for the second spot at both edge positions, and then just like, I guess I have two different ones at the third, just like a good rotational one as the three. It might be good, we'll see. But with that, let's get to the midseason point of year two, and hopefully we're doing well once again. But honestly, I kind of doubt it. All right, so at the midseason point of year two, we are only three and four. Now that's kind of to be expected. The team got a little worse. You typically do worse in year two in rebuilds anyways. So I'm honestly fine with it. I mean, we'll, see, we'll still see how we finish the year, but we got beat 42 to 24 by the Titans. So I don't know if we have much hope this year, to be honest. But we do have some re-signings here, and I think there are going to be some steamy ones in here. Yeah. Um, Corey Bawarquez, uh, definitely going to be a rebuild changing re-signing there. Is that how you say his name, by the way? I've just heard people say it that way. I thought it was like Bajorquez or something like that. I don't know. Either way, we got to bring Nick Chubb back. And let me tell you, this isn't the, this isn't even the major one, arguably. I mean, I guess you would consider it that because he's like our highest overall player, but still six years. Might want to, might want to bump that up a little bit. Don't want six, 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 but six years, 73.2 mil. The length, it's a six year deal. My brother in Christ, I don't exactly want a 34 year old running back, but I guess we can up the length something I can't do in real life, unfortunately. <laughs> what? Um, yeah, th this is the major one. So here's what I did. I cut Amari Cooper and Deshaun Watson and just re-signed them, which saved about like 30 mil per year. I'm gonna re-sign them regardless. What I'm gonna count it as is restructuring them because in Madden, there's no way to restructure, which is like stupid. I wish there was. And obviously teams do that all the time to save money. Uh, but I think we'll be able to get both of them back regardless. I'm not gonna worry about Don Donovan Peoples-Jones yet. I want to be able to get Amari Cooper and Deshaun Watson back first. They'll be available to negotiate at week 15. So I'll simulate there. We'll worry about those contracts and then we'll get to the end of the year. Okay, now we're here in week 15. We'll re-sign Nick Chubb. So we just wanted more years. We'll up it to seven years, 85.4 mil. And he takes it. If he would have complained about the length, I would have literally screamed. And now Mr. Bill Cosby and Amari Cooper. We're probably going to have to go at least play friendly to get Deshaun Watson back five years 189 mil which is nothing compared to his contract in real life to be fair the problem is we're gonna have 4.75 mil left to work with which means we're likely not gonna be able not gonna be able to re-sign anybody else here I might be able to tag Amari Cooper we'll see I'm just hoping more money frees up after the year but five years 189 mil if he even takes this which he does okay thank god now I mean there's no no point in really even trying to re-sign Amari Cooper, so we're not going to. And it looks like we can't afford Donovan Peoples-Jones either. So tough scenes here. Well, I think we can figure it out at the end of the year. So let's just simulate there and hopefully things can work themselves out, but we'll see. Okay, well, I kind of expected that, but in year two, we do miss the playoffs going eight and nine. Our defense was really, really terrible. <laughs> 28th in, in the NFL. We're an 86 overall defense though. Why were we so bad? And an 89 overall offense was only ninth in the NFL? This is kind of weird, man. I I mean, I know the team wasn't amazing on paper, but it was probably better than most NFL teams or most of the others. Deshaun Watson wasn't great this year. I mean, for real life, that's a good year, but for Madden, eh, 4,600 yards, 33 touchdown, 14 picks is still a lot. Nick Chubb with 1,300 yards, 4.7 per carry, 16 touchdowns. Elijah Moore with 1,300 yards, 10 touchdowns. Maybe we don't even need to re-sign Amari Cooper. <laughs> Elijah Moore may might be our new number one. I don't know. Also, I probably should change his number. What's his number going to be in real life? All right. Well, apparently he's just sticking with eight. So that works. But Amari Cooper was solid to 1100 yards. Only four touchdowns though. Donovan Peoples-Jones was fine. David Njoku didn't really do anything. Nick Chubb.
Chubb almost had more yards and touchdowns than him. Hmm, potential trade piece, maybe? Jedrick Wills was really bad. Jack Conklin was fine. Ethan Posick was meh. Honestly, our offensive line wasn't that good this year. And then on defense, JOK led the team with 129 tackles. Tackles for loss. We had 13 for Miles Garrett, 12 for Dalvin Tomlinson, and 12 for Ogbanya Akaronkwo. And then sacks, 11 and a half for Miles Garrett, which pretty big step down. Almost cut them in half from last year, but 11 and a half is still really good. Eight from Ogbanya Akaronkwo. Akaronkwo. I'm going to struggle with that name throughout the rebuild, but eight is pretty good for him. We'll take that. And then Eric Ventura was pretty good as a rookie. 110 tackles, three tackles for loss. Wish that was a little higher, but five sacks and a pick. That's pretty good. Could be up there for defensive rookie of the year. We'll see. And then interceptions, two for Darnell Hartwell. I almost wish I gave him more snaps. He looks like he would have had a really good year. I mean, JOK got 129 tackles. So if you triple Hartwell's season, pretty much, that would have been like nine tackles for loss, 130-ish tackles, three sacks, and six picks. That would be crazy. But JOK also had two picks, two for James Ware as a rookie. Honestly, he had a really nice season too. All of our defensive rookies did really well. Two for Denzel Ward and two for Greg Newsom, and then one for a couple players, including the rookie Eric Ventura. MVP goes to, of course, division rival Joe Burrow, because why wouldn't it? Realistic top four, honestly. That's rare from Madden. Oh, I was gonna say the whole list might be realistic, and then we get to Andy Dalton. Hmm. Offensive player of the year goes to Jonathan Taylor, Nick Chubb at number four, making me pop a Chubb. What? I didn't say anything. Uh, Max Crosby wins defensive player of the year again. No Browns up there. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Neil Waddell of the Raiders. That's a weird face. That looks like someone you would find potentially putting a body into a dumpster? I... Uh, possibly. Larry Bankston, our like third string running back at number eight, and then defensive rookie of the year does go to Eric Ventura. That's huge. James Ware at number four, Darnell Hartwell at number eight. So our three starters on defense that were rookies do make the top 10 list. I almost wish James Ware won it. Well, I don't know. Either way, I'll take it. But we already have a good linebacker. We don't really have that great of a safety yet. And with a dev trait and some extra development, James Ware could turn into a really good player. But either way, we'll take another good linebacker. Won't complain too much there. So, I mean, not a successful year, obviously. We should have been better, but we'll take winning defensive rookie of the year. We'll take our rookies on defense doing well. So with that, let's get into the offseason and let's hopefully start improving this team, question mark? All right, well, before I show who won the Super Bowl, because I am disgusted, uh, Eric Ventura obviously has an upgrade. I was hoping for two, but we'll take it either way. Now does, what? what's his dev trait gonna be? Let's see. It is star. Okay, we'll take star. I mean, I wish he went up to superstar, but I guess he wasn't like that crazy. So we'll definitely take star dev, 7,500 XP. Sounds good to me. And in the Super Bowl, the Atlanta Falcons, led by Andy Dalton, the Red Rifle himself, I almost said Red Rocket, that's not great. Uh, they beat the Chiefs 28-14. to 14. I guess 28 points in the Super Bowl is the Falcons' uh, cursed number, so good to see they can beat that curse. But really, Madden? Oh my god, that's a quarterback group. Andy Dalton, Mitch Trubisky, oh... Oh, they have Julio again. I saw him in like, hold on, I want to show something. He had like a crazy season last year. Borderline his like best season ever, almost, just because of the touchdowns. Almost 1,500 yards and 15 touchdowns. I mean, he had some pretty nasty years back like 2014-15, but he didn't put up the touchdown numbers, so that could be argued as his best. At age, what, like 34? That's, uh, that's something. That's definitely something. Whoever said Madden isn't realistic. And then for re-signings, unfortunately, Corey Bjorquez is going to have to not be re-signed. Saddest day of my life, to be honest. Amari Cooper just suddenly isn't interested, but honestly, that's fine. We'll just bump his money all the way down, which is going to take a minute. Super Bowl chase. <laughs> look, look at the Browns Super Bowl chase meter. That's actually crazy. I don't think I've ever seen a team that low before. Couldn't imagine why the Browns... Holy shit. Couldn't imagine why the Browns are an underdog for the Super Bowl. Will he take this deal? Four years, 3.6 six mil. Of course not. I just wanted to tag him. But for some reason, you can't tag a player if, like, you haven't offered them a deal, which is stupid. Like, what if you have negative cap and you can't offer them a deal? I guess I don't know how that would work in real life. Can a team pick up a franchise tag if they have negative money? I'm sure they can. A lot of teams start the offseason with, like, negative cap space. But Amari Cooper, we're just gonna tag him. It's almost 30 mil per year, so we are going to be very broke. So no more Donovan Peoples-Jones, unfortunately. But we gotta do what we gotta do. So with that, 
I guess we'll just have to get straight to the draft again. Unfortunately, no free agency throughout this rebuild so far, but it could be worse. I checked like the Browns cap space in real life and they're set to have like negative 61 million at this point in real life. So <laughs> it could definitely be worse, but the cap space will expand in real life and they can actually restructure deals. So it'll be better for them. Here we have the fifth year option for Greg Newsom. We're definitely going to pick that up. Has been a pretty good corner so far. Potential breakout candidate in real life this year. We'll see. So sounds good to me. Yay. Even more cap space being eaten up. Can't wait, bruh. Literally all of our replacements on defense got star dev. Akaronkwo, Hartwell, Ventura, and Ware all went up to star dev. And I think we're though those were the only players that went up a dev trait. That's kind of crazy. They really arguably played better than the players they were replacing. So that works out. And honestly, wait, that receiver, I forgot we have Cedric Tillman. Wait, did he go undrafted? Hold on. No, I think he got pretty, I think he got picked pretty high. Yeah, third round. Never mind. Definitely not undrafted. I don't know what the hell I was thinking of, but honestly, he could maybe start next year too if we don't find a better receiver in the draft. We're really not looking too bad at all. And wait, this, bl uh, this Blankst, nope, Bankston guy that L in his first name was throwing me off. He is superstar dev. Uh, he's already 24, but that's also very interesting. I don't know what the hell we're gonna do with him, but he's, he's there, I guess. So that might make the draft interesting. All right, well, here in the draft, the Jags have the number one pick. We don't pick until number 15, which is a little surprising considering we didn't even have a winning record, but let's simulate to our first pick, finally having a first round pick in this rebuild. And let's see what I wanna do here, because honestly, I don't know. I have no idea. Well, I have an idea. I just need to make an, a decision, which apparently I'm bad at doing. Trayvon Wall is pretty interesting. I think I would like him more if he had better awareness, but he is very fast. He's the fastest receiver in the class. That rhymes, I guess. Um, will he even be good enough to start for us is the question. He does have really good deep route. He has good spec catch for like a pure deep threat, good release, maybe even good ball carrier ability, but is he like a necessity? I don't know. I mean, it's either that or we go like Dakota Richardson, ooh, who does look pretty good, but his coverage doesn't look good. He's a pure run defender. I mean, it's like season B's, but he's an outside linebacker and that's compared against pass rushers. So it's not gonna be very good, I don't think. Could also go with a corner, but it, it would be like our fourth corner. So probably not. Yeah, let's go with the receiver. Let's go Trayvon Wall. He looks good. Is he gonna have hidden dev? I don't know, probably not, but he is very fast. Elite speed, agility, and acceleration. I'm just a little concerned about like his medium route running and short route running and his awareness, but overall looks like a good player. All right, Trayvon Wall, 5'8", 190, 22 years old, left-handed just like me for real, out of Louisville. Let's take him. Normal dev, I knew it. I called it. Looks like a decent enough player, but normal dev does hurt. Here, I kind of want to take Alex Carrington. He's not a scheme fit at linebacker, but I don't really care. Good coverage. The reason I like him is because he is a pass coverage linebacker with good pursuit, which is kind of rare. So I'm kind of intrigued. Unless there's like a really good safety or something, I'll probably just take him. Jarvis Spadell does look maybe pretty good. Maybe he's fast. Ooh, this guy might actually be really good. His A awareness, but C to F play rec. That's confusing. I actually don't know if this guy is good. <laughs> I kind of wish we had like back to back picks here or something because I want both the safety and the linebacker. Who would get more playing time? Spadell could start, but I don't know if he's good enough. Carrington will probably start over the older, lower overall linebacker we have. So let's take Carrington, six foot, 230, 21 years old out of Michigan. Don't let me down, hopefully. Okay, he does have hidden 86 speed, which I'm pretty sure this guy had a better 40 time than the linebacker we took last year who had 87 speed and like 91 excel, but that's Madden for you. He does look like a pretty good player though, so we'll take it. I almost want to trade up here. What do the Bills need? Oh yeah, I can't trade anything because even if I trade a player, which would clear up cap space, it still says, oh, you're under the cap. You can't make this trade. Like, yeah, I know, but I'm clearing cap space with this trade. So I can't trade any players here. It'd have to be straight up picks, which I don't think we really have the value for this. I mean, we might, but honestly, that safety was fine enough last year. We'll, we'll stick with him. He was a good player. He got star dev for a reason. We'll just simulate to our next pick. I guess we'll go Alex Hickson with our last pick. I wanted an offensive line but none of them really look all that good. So Alex Hickson, 6'4", 350, 21 years old out of LSU, 39 bench reps at the call, 
Columbine, which is only great. I wish it was elite. 41 at his pro day. I'm surprised it's not elite. Good awareness and play rec. Great tackle. Just seems like a good value pick. Let's take him. Hidden dev, 93 strength. Sounds good to me. Okay, this is definitely a much better draft than last year. In the first round, Trayvon Hall is a 77 overall. I didn't even think he would be that good. I figured he would be a good overall, but I didn't know he would be that good. Now, obviously, it would have been better if he had a dev trait, but nothing I can really do about that. His catching is better than I thought it would be. I mean, he had C catching and catching traffic. Apparently, there is 79. We'll definitely take that. And he had what, like D short route? It's a 72. That's not awful. I mean, it's not great, but he's a deep threat, so it is what it is. So he'll definitely be our third receiver. We're going to have a short ass receiving core between him and Elijah Moore, but it is what it is. <laughs> God, I'm back to saying that like a million times a rebuild. And then Alex Carrington is a 72 overall. Now, I'm not going to do this, but just out of curiosity, what's his overall at safety? Not going to do it, but 75 overall. Maybe I should do it. Wait, I accidentally saved it. Uh, it's not realistic, but I could do it. I mean, it could be realistic, but we'll just keep him at linebacker for now. We don't really need a safety anyways. That was definitely a good pick as well. And then Alex Hickson is a 70 overall. Isn't even going to start, but decent enough pick. And then I did take every pick in this draft again. Some better than others. I mean, I completely got baited by Alec or Glenn Davis. He does have hidden dev at least, but he had like all A's across the board. Apparently that was not the case for every stat. Some decent picks later. So overall, I mean, it was a pretty good draft. So with that, let's jump into year number three and let's see how the team's looking. All right, well, here's a look at the team heading into year number three of the rebuild. Still not too different here on offense, honestly. Just Trayvon Wall is really the only difference on offense throughout the rebuild. Obviously, you just saw him. Looks like a very good player. His head was very shiny there. That was interesting. And then on defense, a couple changes this offseason. I am going to start Alex Hickson just because he does have a dev trait. Absolutely zero pass rush to his game, but obviously good strength like y'all saw when we picked him. So I guess he's just our nose tackle replacement for Siaki Ika. And then Alex Carrington should be a good third linebacker. I feel bad replacing Darnell Hartwell already because he was good as a rookie, but he's already 25. He's not going to develop too much. It would be really hard for him to even ever hit an 80, let alone like an actual really good overall. So we'll just go with Carrington. Hope he does well. So hopefully our defense as a whole can do better this year. If not, we're definitely going to have to switch the defensive playbook. But with that, let's get to the midseason point of year three and hopefully we're doing pretty well. All right. Well, at the midseason point of year three, we are unfortunately only three and four once again. Now the Raiders at an 85 overall are seven and oh. Uh, I wish we could have that kind of success. It is our defense struggling once again, so we might change the defensive playbook, but honestly, it might be tough to figure out a good one to switch to. I mean, if the Raiders have a 79 overall defense and are eighth in points per game for defense, then that might be a pretty decent one. We'll see. We have a breakout wide receiver here, though. It's gonna be... We don't know yet, apparently. It's gonna be Elijah Moore. Okay, three plus touchdowns or 150 plus yards. I don't know about that, Chief, but we'll see. And then we do have some decent re-signings here. Amari Cooper, we definitely want back. We can probably afford to go player friendly because players rarely accept neutral. I mean, I can try neutral four years, 64.8 mil. Now that I said players accept or rarely accept neutral, he's going to accept it. Honestly, that's not too bad of a contract, less than 20 mil per year, like 16.2 or something. Let's see if he takes it. And he does. Okay, cool. We'll take it. I was wrong, but we'll take it. Damn, we have a large amount of re-signings here. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight starters. Um, we're going to have to make some tough decisions here. So I definitely want Joel Batonio back, but honestly, if he doesn't take this, we're not going to be able to get him back. And I wish he was interested. I mean, he would be interested in real life more than likely, but three years, 53.1 mil. Let's see if he takes it. And he does. Okay, good. Now, JOK, we definitely want him back as well. Seven years, 75.6 mil. He takes it. Okay, good. We got the two, I guess, major players back. Those are the two biggest ones I wanted. Elijah Moore, I definitely want back. We can't negotiate with him just yet. Dalvin Tomlinson, how's he been doing? He's been doing all right. I mean, not enough to really pay him too much, I don't think, but he's been doing okay. So he'll probably be like the last option. Jedrick Wills has been pretty bad. If he was interested, maybe, but I don't want to overpay for him. Ethan Posick has been fine. 
fine, but again, he's not interested. Agbanya Akaranko has been decent so far this year, so once we can re-sign him, I might, but again, just not interested. So let's actually simulate a week again. I'm guessing we're gonna lose to the Raiders, and we do, we get smoked. Do we hit the breakout, actually? I wanna check, probably not. Okay, no. But the re-signings is what I wanted to get to. Wasn't Elijah Moore more interested than that just a week ago? I don't know. But four years, 41.6 mil, he takes it. And with that, I mean, I might re-sign someone at the end of the year, but oh, oh, oh. we also might just let everybody go, to be honest. But let's see how we can finish the season. My guess is not very well. Ah, oh, yes, I love an 86 overall team going 5 and 12. Thank you, Madden. Very cool. That makes a lot of sense. Let's, let's see what went wrong this year. Deshaun Watson was definitely not the problem. He was overall really good. 34 touchdowns, only 8 picks. Solid season for Madden. Almost literally one yard away from 1,300 yards for Nick Chubb, 14 touchdowns. We had two 1,000 yard receivers, Amari Cooper and Elijah Moore. Trayvon Wall as a rookie was pretty decent, 800 yards, six touchdowns. David Njoku didn't really do much. You know, depending on what our second tight end's dev trade is, we could trade David Njoku. I mean, Glenn Davis probably only has star. Eh, yeah, he only went up two overall. It's probably, yeah, it's only star. Okay, so we'll probably stick with David Njoku, but in this system, he hasn't really done anything. Blocking, our guards were really good, but that's that's about it. And we do have a potential replacement on the roster already for Jedrick Wills in Dewan Jones. Now, I don't know if I would feel comfortable with him playing left tackle, because I feel like he would allow 24 sacks, but we could move Jack Conklin over to left, I guess. That would probably work out pretty well, who does have an upgrade here. So I think that's going to be the move. And then on defense, we had two players with 151 tackles, JOK and Eric Ventura. It looks like we were on defense a lot. We had a crazy amount of tackles for loss. Agbanya Akaronkwo could be up there for defensive player of the year. I hope we do get him back. And then sacks. Miles Garrett, ever since the first year, has been disappointing. I mean, 12 and a half sacks is really good, but we've seen what he's capable of in Madden simulation. So we're obviously hoping for that. Akaronkwo with nine sacks. And then outside of that, really nothing. Alex Hickson as a rookie was really good, actually. 14 tackles for loss, three and a half sacks. So maybe up there for defensive rookie of the year. And then interceptions, five for Denzel Ward, two for Ventura and Ware, and then one for a few players. Let's check out yearly awards though. Joe Burrow wins MVP for the third time here now, or second, I don't know. Jameis Winston on the commanders up there, that's great. Teddy Bridgewater back on the Vikings, that's kind of fun. But no Deshaun Watson up there. Offensive player of the year goes to Josh Jacobs. Jonathan Taylor on the Bengals. Where did Joe Mixon go then? Do they just have like the craziest running back duo ever? Feels a little unnecessary, but fair enough. Especially with the passing game they have. What are they even gonna, what are they even gonna do on offense? But no Browns up here, no Nick Chubb, unfortunately. Defensive player of the year goes to Nick Bosa on the Chiefs. No thank you. No Browns up here, unfortunately. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Sebastian Russell. It looks like a new quarterback for the Dolphins, so two of mine have gone somewhere. Trayvon Wall at number three, unfortunately. I thought he would be a little higher. Glenn Davis at number 10. And then defensive rookie of the year does not go to our player. It goes to Calvin Higgins. It sounds like a clothing brand or something for the Tennessee Titans. Alex Hickson at number four. I feel like we have about a million Alexes on defense, but definitely a really disappointing year. But on the bright side, we are going to have a pretty high pick, so we might be able to do something good with it. We'll see. And I actually want to check what is the like best defense. Oh, the Chiefs. I mean, that's not a good defense in real life, really, but they are a 4-3. The Raiders had a good defense. What do they run now? It might still be like a 4-3 in the game. I don't know. Either way, the Chiefs were better. We'll probably go with the Chiefs. I don't know if we need to switch the offensive playbook. I mean, it finished 22nd in points per game, but it was pretty good for like most of the year and hasn't really been the problem throughout the rebuild. Oh yeah, we have a ton of upgrades. I forgot about these. Plus three man for Martin Emerson. Martin Emerson, I haven't said anything about him, but he's becoming a really good player here. Up to a 79 overall. We'll definitely take that. We're up to an 88 overall. Oh my God. And we still didn't make the playoffs. Oh, that's not even with morale either. Either We have negative morale for a good amount of players. This team is crazy. But in the off season, we're definitely going to have some tough decisions to make heading into the fourth and final year. Oh, that's a lovely Super Bowl. Two of the worst run teams in the NFL. I guess we're also usering one of the worst run teams, but the, the Raiders destroy the commanders 35 to 14 in the Super Bowl. Yikes. 
I don't know about all that. We have Jalen Watson, shout out Washington State, go Cougs, I guess. I say I guess while that's my favorite college team, I don't know. And then for re-signings, we are screwed. We don't have any money. And that's really unfortunate because Ogbanya Akaronkwo, he hasn't really developed in terms of overall because again, Madden's stupid, players just can't develop even if they're older. My big like case in point for this kind of thing is like Geno Smith. Uh, if he would have had the season he had in real life, he would have only gone up from like a 68 to like a 70. Whereas in real life, I think it's fair to say he played like at least an 80 overall around there. Hell, even if you want to go back a few years, like Lorenzo Alexander for the Bills, he was like a really late career breakout, would have gone from like a 65 to a 67 while he was like one of the top linebackers in the NFL for like a few years. So I don't know, it's kind of stupid, but I don't know if we're going to be able to get him back anyways. The rest of these players, I mean, I'm fine with losing. <laughs> All these four have been pretty bad. I mean, Alvin Tomlinson's been solid, but nothing we can't replace necessarily. So with that, let's get into free agency. We're still probably not going to be able to spend any money. This has been a pure draft rebuild, pretty much. Let's see if there are any cuts we can make. Um, not unless we want to cut uh, Miles Garrett, and I don't think I want to do that. You know, hold on. I want to do something. All right, here we're trading David Njoku to the Colts for a third round pick. I feel like that's fair enough value. I mean, maybe it's a little too much because because David Njoku hasn't produced literally like at all here, but this frees up cap space. This offense doesn't use tight end anyways. We can just go and draft another one. So this feels like a fine enough move and we get a third round pick when we honestly could have just cut him. So at least we're getting something. I like him in real life, of course, just he isn't doing anything here. Thankfully, Akaronkwo doesn't have any offers because really we can barely afford him. I'm hoping we can get him. Honestly, it's not that good of a free agent class anyways. So we're not really missing out on too much here. I'm actually a little curious to see where some of our players will go, so we'll check that. But Ogbanya Akaronkwo, we definitely want him back. The Steelers are interested. God damn it. Hold on. I might be able to cut someone else. Let me see. Um, Alex Wright was definitely an interesting pick in real life. That'll save one and a half mil. That might be enough to push us over the edge. I don't know. And Junior Rush, that'll save a little over a mil. So that, I don't know if we're going to be able to get a full five star offer, but we will try. Or five bars, whatever. I have no idea. I don't know what to call that thing. Okay, it was, surprisingly, even though he has no interest. So we do have the lead for him. He might sign with the Steelers anyways, which would be extra unfortunate because that's our division rival. But let's see. He does sign with us. Okay, good. Interesting stuff here. Joe Mixon to the Dolphins, Mike Williams to the Titans. I could see that for some weird reason. The Patriots get a couple good players. But where do our players go? So Ethan Posick to the Texans. They do need a center in real life. Jedrick Wills to the Patriots. The Patriots went crazy here. They got like a whole new team. Orlando Brown to the 49ers. It's interesting. I don't know why I mentioned him. He's not a Browns player. Uh, former Brown and Odell to the Cardinals. Dalvin Tomlinson still chilling here. Who else was it? It was Juan Thornhill. He's still chilling here too. So we obviously lost some players this year, but it feels more like trimming the fat than a real loss. Oh, hold on. Joel Batonio retired. Year four might be tougher than I expected because we do actually kind of have a lot of needs. A defensive tackle, a safety, a guard, and a tight end. We need to find all in one draft. Well, we'll see what we can do. Or wait, no, 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 no. I saw him. Hold on. <laughs> I'm stupid. It just moved him to center. Why? So he didn't retire. We just need to draft a center. That's right. Okay. So we're good. I wish it wouldn't move players around like that and give me a heart attack, but it's still a position we need to fill anyways, but at least Joel Batonio is still here. Also, I know I'm rambling a lot, but I just want to say big thank you for for like all the new subscribers and all that shit. Welcome to all of you. The last video I made gained, let me check, almost 300 subscribers just from one video alone. That's crazy. We're almost at 4K. We might even be close by the time this video goes out. So thank you all for that. Also big thank you to all the like OGs and shit. But yeah, I can't believe we're already almost at 4,000 subscribers. I mean, we literally just hit 3K. So I didn't even think we would get this far. Um, And we're still going going way, way up, especially in the last few days. So big thank you for that. Okay, so here in the draft, we have the number two overall pick. I didn't know it would be quite that high. I figured it would be top five, but we were what, five and 12? So we'll definitely take that. The Colts have the number one pick. Isn't that what the Browns were at one point? The Colts, or there's some connection there, like the Baltimore Colts moved to Cleveland and became the Browns. I don't know. There's some connection there. Either way, we have the number 
number two pick. Let's see what the Colts are going to do. I hope they don't take the player I'm thinking about, but honestly, I also kind of hope they do because the player I'm thinking about is not a need literally at all, and it would be hard for me to justify taking him. Okay, they don't go with him. The player I'm thinking about is Mr. Nick Allen, a wide receiver out of Penn State. Now, receiver isn't a need for us anymore, but this guy looks absurd. He has A, spec catch, catch in traffic, catching release, B, deep route, short route, A to B awareness. His medium route isn't great, but he's 6'4", 233, and ran a goddamn 426. A 424 at his pro day. A 43.6 inch vertical jump. Is that a record? That might be. It's gonna be hard for me to justify taking him, but he just looks so insane. If he has, like, normal dev or something, I might just break down and cry, but I could honestly see Madden baiting me like that, so. You know what? Not a need, but it is fun, so let's take him. He does have hidden dev, 97 speed, 99 jumping, Mr. Nick Allen out of Penn State. Welcome to the Browns. Now, unfortunately for us, that doesn't really fill any of our positions of need. <laughs> um, we still have all of them. This guy does look pretty good. I'm kind of thinking about trading down to get him, though. He's, well, he doesn't actually look that good, but apparently he's a first to second round talent, which we'll definitely take. I do think I want to trade down a little bit, a little bit, and try to get some other trade value this year. Let me see. A two, three, and a six, but that two might be a little too late. We could get a first, but I mean, it doesn't matter. We're not going to be in that draft anyways. We can get a four to trade down to 42. I mean, what would we even do with that fourth round pick anyways? The major thing I want is low key like two seconds, but I guess we wouldn't get that anyways. You know what? I guess we'll take the two and the four from the Lions. So that works out. And I guess we'll take the safety with this first pick and hope and pray that some of the other players are still available. So yeah, Alexander Patterson, is he going to have a dev trait? I don't know, but he's a very low injury player, which I typically like to draft. But I guess the more and more I draft them, the more and more they have normal dev. So we'll see what happens. He's six foot, 222. I wish he was a little younger. 23 is fine though. UCLA. Skip the combine and his pro day because he's probably hurt. Let's take him. Okay, he has hidden dev, thankfully. So he'll start for us at safety. We honestly might move him to strong safety because he is six foot, 222, but we'll see what happens. And then in the third round, first pick. Okay, it looks like the tight end I want is still here. One of the linemen I wanted are gone, but it's not hard to find linemen anyways. The defensive tackle is still here, but honestly, I don't know if he's going to play a role anyway. Ooh, he might. Wait, he looks crazy. Isaiah Woodard, 6'5", 290, 22 years old out of Texas A&M. Crazy fast and still strong. I mean, this is this is kind of Kalija Cansey, pretty much. His A finesse moves and play rec. Good tackle, too. Let's take him. Hidden Dev, 81 speed at defensive tackle. 90 strength. That feels like a really, really good pick. We'll see if he starts. I don't know if he's going to be a crazy overall, but that felt good. And then, like I said, I do want to take a tight end. We might go Kevin Dunn. He's 6'4", 267, 22 years old out of Bama. Is the second fastest tight end in the class, or first if you go off his pro day. His ratings are pretty good. Well, I guess really the only bad thing about him is, I guess, he does have a few C's on the left side and F injury, but in bad injury can be pretty good if you have injuries off, because that might mean they're a good player that's just hurt right now. So overall, he looks solid. Let's take him, and we do get a normal dev. Okay, I kind of had that feeling, but he could be a good overall. We'll see. And then in the fourth round, this is probably the last pick I'm going to take of the rebuild. We do need a center still. Who do we want to go with? Ooh, mm, he's really not that strong. Okay, we might not go with him, but we might, but we might not. Glenn Matlock, though. Ooh, Ooh he's a horrible pass blocker, <laughs> but he has good strength. We might go with him, either him or Paul Barden. We honestly might take both if we can. I guess first we'll go Glenn Matlock, though, because he does have good strength or better strength. Solid awareness, just his pass block is so bad. I don't know if he's going to be good, but let's take him. What did I just do? Well, that was weird. Okay, well, he has normal dev. Somehow I switched the screen immediately after we took him, but good strength. I don't know if he's going to be great, but we need a center, so we'll take whoever we can find. You know what? I'm just going to take like quite a few linemen and hope that one works. 343 might be a little big to play center, so we're not going to do that. All right, this might have to go down as one of the best drafts I've ever had. I think this is the best player I've ever drafted. Nick Allen at an 82 overall. Obviously, we're hoping he has a good dev trait, but I mean, either way, he's crazy. Obviously, 99 jumping like y'all saw. 91 spec catch. 97 speed, obviously. Looks like an absolute monster. And was it 
necessary, no, but it is an upgrade regardless, and that feels like a damn good one. And then, honestly, Alexander Patterson is a 73 overall, which is right around where I expected. He looks pretty nice too, though. I mean, he has better zone than man, which I definitely didn't expect because he is a hybrid type. Better hit power than I expected. He overall just looks better than I really even expected. So he'll be a good replacement for Juan Thornhill. Honestly, couldn't really do worse than Juan Thornhill was because Juan, Juan Thornhill was one of the worst players I've ever seen in this game. He literally had like zero pass deflections and zero picks throughout his time on the team. That was not great. Um, <laughs> Isaiah Woodward, the defensive tackle, also looks very good. I guess I'll start him. I mean, it's either him or Siaki Ika and Woodward, or Woodard actually has a dev trait and is a really good athlete, obviously, so we'll start him. And even Kevin Dunn is better than I expected. 73 overall, good speed. His catching isn't great. Really good short route, though, for a tight end. Good awareness. I don't know if he looks quite as good as his overall says he is, but we'll definitely take it, and he will start for us this year. And then, center's kind of tricky. We do have two options there. Glenn Matlock is a 67 overall, so he might start. We'll see. And then, these two these two guards I took are decent, but Paul Barden went down to like a 65 at center. I didn't even move Artie Johnson because he is bigger and would probably go down more. I did take Luke Justice, a defensive end who had a hidden dev, so we'll definitely take that. Is more of like a 3-4 defensive end, but we'll just kind of slide him in on the inside, so we'll have him play defensive tackle pretty much. Just have him listed at end so he's a scheme fit. And then Mason Reeves is the other interesting one. He was a 66 overall guard. I slid him into center. He only went down to a 65, but he does have the dev trait and is out of LSU, so he can be our pretty much direct Ethan Posick replacement. I didn't even realize that. That's kind of crazy. Has horrendous lead block, but it is what it is. Um, yeah, I think I think I might start him just because he is from LSU. So that works out. That's weird that he is because I was thinking in my head right before I looked, I was like, you know what? He could just straight up be Ethan Posick. What college is he from? And it's, oh, LSU. That perfectly works out. So I think we are going to start him. So we literally found one, two, three, four, five starters from this draft alone. We'll definitely take that. But here is a look at the team heading into the fourth and final year. I just, again, want to say big thank you for all the support lately. It really does mean a ton. If you've made it all the way here and you haven't liked and subscribed, I would very much appreciate it. You can undo either of those if I make you mad or something. I don't know. I would just very much appreciate it. Plus, it'll make you an OG of the channel. And of course, I guess I'm just going to plug everything here. That wasn't the intention, but let me know what team to do next for a shout out whenever I pick that team to rebuild. But anyways, back to the team. I am rambling about shit just so much in this rebuild. I'm sorry if you're a Browns fan or something. I don't ramble this much normally. I do a little bit, but not this much. The team's looking very nice. Obviously, Nick Allen, our number two overall pick from this year's draft, looks like a monster. You've seen him a million times. I take like such long breaks between like showing the draft and then the team here that like I forget, oh hey, I literally just showed this in the video, so I don't need to show it again two minutes later, but I'm trying to get better about that. <laughs> it's just hard to remember. I'm not used to making videos like this. I guess I've been doing it for like a year, but still. And then we added Kevin Dunn at tight end, Reeves at center, who we are going to start. The offense in general hasn't changed too much. We've really only lost players. We literally haven't signed one player from free agency because we can't afford it, but we're still looking good. Like we've done some pretty good drafting in this rebuild. Denzel Ward actually got superstar, which I didn't even notice, but the defense as a whole is looking good. It's a million star devs, and I mean, more than likely Woodard and Patterson will both have star dev too. I mean, hopefully it's better, but it's going to be a lot of star devs here. <laughs> Overall, the defense though is looking very nice, so I'm excited to get into this year. I want to see if we can actually do well this year. There's a part of me that kind of doubts it. I also realized I almost forgot to switch the defense to Kansas City, and do I want to change the offense? I mean, I could, but our offense hasn't really been the problem, so we'll stick it out. I want to try and stay as true to the Browns as I can be without it hurting us too much, but with that, let's simulate to the end of the year, and hopefully we can do well. All right, Matt and Sim just must hate me, I guess. At least it has lately. I'll show you why I'm saying that in a second, but super quick, if you haven't already, like, subscribe. I know I just plugged like five seconds ago, but again, really trying to grow the channel. I set a goal in the intro, but I might change it to just straight up 4,000 subs, because I mean, we're only like 150 away. We gained like 300 on the last video, pretty much. So yeah, 4,000, I guess, will be the goal. At the very least, we'll hit it this week, so subscribe if you still want to be an OG while you can be one. And 250 likes, which may
maybe seems low, but uh, be sure to do both because we'll easily hit both if you do both. I'd very much appreciate it. But this is how the team is looking at the end of year four. Nick Allen does have X Factor, which is what I expected. So I guess, is he considered a generational player? I don't know what defines one, but I guess he's probably one. Kind of looks like Des Bryant, maybe just because of the number 88, but we will definitely take an X Factor there. And then here's a look at the defense. Patterson has Superstar. Honestly, I was kind of expecting Woodard to have Superstar and Patterson to have Normal, or er, Star, but I guess it's the other way around, but we'll take one either way. So that's pretty massive. But in year number four, we finish nine and eight, barely making the playoffs. I'm surprised we did because we were third in our division. But to be fair, I'm surprised we weren't a lot better than we ended up being because we had the ninth best offense in terms of scoring in the fourth best defense. We'll check out the season stats. We'll see what went wrong. I'm guessing the offensive line was probably bad, but Deshaun Watson, good year, 4,200 yards, 36 touchdowns, only five picks. The completion percentage wasn't great, but we'll take it. 16, almost 1,700 yards for Nick Chubb, 16 touchdowns. Amari Cooper was our one, our lone 1,000 yard receiver with 1,300 yards, five touchdowns. Elijah Moore, only eight yards away from 1,000. Nick Allen was solid as a rookie. Kevin Dunn as a rookie, almost had 600 yards with 12 touchdowns. Good amount of touchdowns there. Blocking, ooh. <laughs> well, I'm glad I didn't put Dewan Jones at left tackle because that probably would have legitimately been 30 sacks, but he allowed 19. He was horrific. Jack Conklin was honestly better than Jedrick Wills was. Mason Reeves wasn't great at center, but we expected that. Joel Batonio wasn't great either. Wyatt Teller was solid. Not a great offensive line year. JOK led the team with 112 tackles. A lot of tackles for loss, led by 18 from, from Ogbanya Akaronkwo. And then sacks 28 from Miles Garrett shattering the record. Now, I don't know if it's still going to be the record here, but it would be the record in real life. We'll check. Seven and a half from Akaronkwo. Six from Woodard as a rookie. And then not much outside of that. Interceptions, not many. Five from Denzel Ward. Three from JOK and Martin Emerson. And one from Eric Ventura. And that's it. That's not great. But let's check out records. I want to see where does the 28 sacks place Miles Garrett. Okay, it does give him the record. I was thinking maybe my... Or, Max Crosby might have broken it, but apparently not. So we'll definitely take the sacks in a season record. And where does he place all time now? Does he break the list? No, unfortunately not yet, but he's probably close. Yeah, he's still probably a couple years away, but he is getting close. But let's check out some of the yearly awards. MVP goes to Patrick Mahomes. Realistic top five, top six, and then Jameis Winston on the <laughs> commanders. Okay. Deshaun Watson at number eight. So at least he was up there. Offensive rookie or offensive of player of the year goes to Josh Jacobs, Nick Chubb at number three. I'm kind of surprised he didn't win that, but at least he's up there pretty high. Defensive player of the year, of course, goes to Miles Garrett. If he, if he didn't win it, it would have, we would have had to uh, riot, probably. No other Browns up here, but a former Brown in Jadavion Clowney. That's interesting. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Justin Columbus of the Colts. I saw him up there for MVP, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, at number nine, so apparently he was pretty good. I just had a Cooper Cup jump scare. That was fun. Kevin Dunn at number five, Nick Allen all the way down at seven. I thought he would be a little higher. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Tank Norwood of the Ravens. Isaiah Woodard at number two. I mean, are they the same player? I mean, they're the same division, same overall. They both have wood in their last name, like I put my wood in your mother. What? Alexander Patterson at number 10. So at least we won Defensive Player of the Year. I was thinking we would get more, but we'll take it. And we're going to be taking on our division rivals, the Baltimore Ravens in the Wild card. They are 12 and 5. It looks like they're the same overall as us, although we might have gone up from the upgrades. We're in 86 now. Okay. This is a hard-ass team to rebuild. I'm surprised it's even gone as well as it has because I mean, this the cap space is ridiculous. But we've managed, we've survived, and we still have a pretty good team. So with that, I guess I'll check these scenarios. Playoff Blizzard. So minus like all movement ability pretty much. I hate how the player that's talking there always like slides around on their feet. They don't like walk. They just like turn without moving their legs. It's great. And then first of many, always got to play it cool. You know me. No risk, no reward. I'm fine with that. But let's jump in against the Ravens and hopefully we can beat our division rival. Although I kind of doubt it. All right, here we go in the wild card. A snowy game, of course, against the Ravens in Baltimore. It's going to be a tough one, but we will try our best. Do I have much confidence? No, but we definitely could win. We go up early 7-0, but the Ravens do tie it in the first quarter. We start driving, but they get the ball back and they do go score. They're up 14 to 7. We do score in the 
end of the first half, but the Ravens kick a field goal. We get a touchdown to take the lead 21-17. They get a field goal to bring it in within one point, but we get a field goal to make it 24-20, and that wins us the game. That's always so hard for me to commentate, especially when I just woke up like not that long ago. I, I'm stupid regularly, and that makes it even harder, but at least we get the win. We'll take it. This definitely isn't the best team we've ever built, but it was maybe the most impressive considering how goddamn hard this one is. Pretty big upgrade there, Ogbanya Akaronkwo. We'll take it. And then we have a recap for both of these. I kind of wish we had like a Joel Batonio, uh, what do they call it? One last, one last hurrah, that's what it is. I wish we had one of those like for Joel Batonio or something because it would be nice to have the extra morale and it's the last year anyways, but we'll also take the 2,500 XP for every player here. Sounds good to me. And give us those sweet and juicy staff points, please and thank you. I literally don't think I have ever manually spent a staff point in this game. Just a fun fact there. Is it because I don't care? Uh, maybe. But in, oh, <laughs> rest in peace to our team. Uh, we're gonna be taking on the Chiefs in the divisional. They definitely have a better team and a better record, and they have the home game. I would be perfectly fine losing this game, to be honest. We don't really deserve to. All right, Dewan Jones, I'm just gonna go pass protector. We need all the help we can get there. It's not gonna bring up his overall, but uh, he definitely needs that. A lot of upgrades here. Mason Reeves got an upgrade. That's pretty big. Brings him up to a 70 overall. Makes the team look a little better. But let's get, er, no, I was gonna say let's get potentially one last look at the team, but we can just check after the game if we lose. So with that, let's jump in against the Chiefs, and hopefully we can take them down. All right, well, here we go in the divisional against Kansas City. In Kansas City, of course, there's the big man, Andy Reid himself. I hope he doesn't eat me. What? I don't know. I'm saying weird things in this rebuild. All right, let's simulate the game out. I hope we can win, but honestly, I would feel a little scummy if we did. The Chiefs go up early seven. We do score three, though, but we get a touchdown to take the lead 10 to seven. They do score, though. They're, they're up 14 to 10. They kick a field goal going into half. They're up 24 to 10 now. Okay, this is valid. They're up 27 to 10. We do get a touchdown to make it 27 17, but they get another one to bring it to 34 to whatever that was. There's just a lot of scoring as we do lose, but I'm perfectly fine with that, to be honest. You know, it's never great to be fine with losing, but it's perfectly valid. But of course, that is the end of today's rebuild. Again, big thank you for all the support lately. I know that's such a generic YouTube term, but I really do appreciate it. Again, for like the millionth time, subscribe if you haven't already. Rebuilds are all I do, so if you enjoyed this, you'll enjoy all of them. And like the video, because that helps out a ton, and comment down below what team I should do next, because A, it helps push the video to more people, B, lets me know what y'all want to see, and C, if I pick your comment, I'll give you a shout out and sub to you and all that good shit. So it's literally like a win, 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 win. But pretty good team here. I feel all right with this one. Definitely not my best work, but I feel like I did pretty well. But that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. There's going to be another rebuild on the screen now. Click that if you want to. If not, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see y'all again in the next video. Goodbye.